Welcome to this full review video where you will actually see what you can observe with this really nice budget-friendly telescope. What we have here is the Skywatcher Heritage 130P and it's the best budget-friendly, beginner-friendly telescope that I know on the market. To be honest, that's the primary reason why I bought it secondhand, just so I can make a review and I can recommend it to people who would like to not spend too much money, but at the same time use real telescope. Because you know what? Many times these days we have so-called trash telescopes, which people tend to buy around the $200 mark and are absolute trash. That's why I want to recommend to you a real telescope that is going to show you basically all the objects that you can see in a bigger telescope as well, just with a little bit less resolution and a little bit less brightness. So let's get down to it to see what makes this telescope such a great telescope. Now this may come as a surprise to you if you are new to astronomy, but many experienced astronomers do not pick their telescope based on purely visual performance or money or any of that. They pick it based on how heavy it is and if they are going to be able to carry it. <laughs> the main advantage and the best advantage of this telescope, even over the 12 inch that I have, is its weight. It weighs only 6 kilograms and you can literally lift it with just one hand. I did it. <laughs> and this is what makes it perfect for beginners and also kids. If you have a kid that you would like to buy them a real telescope, get them into astronomy, this is the way to go. I'm not going to tell you that this is a telescope that can last your lifetime. You will probably need to upgrade to something better, something uh, bigger down the road. But you never know. Maybe you find out with this telescope that astronomy is really not for you. And then you just sell it on the second hand market and you don't waste too much money. Now, another big advantage of a Dobsonian telescope is its ease of use. It's, it's literally point and observe. That's it. It's fully manual. You just point it in the sky and you observe. We'll have a look at it later, some of the details. But for now, I think the main thing that you're interested in is, is to show you what you can actually see. Collimation went a lot easier than expected, like 2-3 minutes, and now we are ready for the planets. Even Venus is out, let's try Venus. This is a video that I shot over the last few weeks with this telescope, Jupiter. Not quite as clear, not quite as bright, but that's what you get sometimes with uh, bad seeing in the atmosphere, and also there are some limitations with a telescope like this, but it's still Jupiter. And the other night I saw it outside of the city, I could clearly see all its moons and it was much, much clearer than in this video. Next we have Mars, again you will be able to see it during composition, so it looks quite nice. And of course, if you have a look at the moon, then you will be able to absolutely see all the craters that you have over there. Even with this nice little telescope, you can literally spend hours, even weeks, exploring all the details of the moon. Well, Saturn is gone at this time of the year, but you should have no issues looking at the rings, and you should see something like this. It is also possible, of course, to observe the sun if you build simple solar filter. Let's have a look how that went. So here we have the Skywatcher Heritage 130P in practice. This is how you would be typically using this telescope. It's really not a rocket science, it's a tabletop Dobsonian. You will need table, unfortunately. It's simply point and look at it, it's that simple. I'm wearing sunglasses because I'm looking at the sun. Never a bad idea to have some extra protection, these are polarized. Of course, for observing the sun, you will need a sun filter. This one is self-made. The guy who sold me a telescope made it. What I can also recommend, especially when using the telescope during the day, is putting some kind of shroud around it. I didn't want to bother because honestly, I'm selling this one right after I make this video. I have a big 12 inch, so I don't need a small telescope. During the day, because of the hot air, the seeing is always not very good. That's really all there is to it, to using a simple Dobsonian. But let's get back inside during the night and have a look at some of the details. Again, I captured a couple of videos. Here you can clearly see some of the sunspots. 
but again the air was not the best we have something called seeing it has to be steady air in order to capture some of the details to rest assured for some days the image will be much clearer than this now observing the planets and the moon and the sun it can get pretty boring <laughs> pretty fast Rest assured, with this nice telescope you can actually observe most of the messier catalogue of deep sky objects. The other night I went outside of the city and observed quite a few of them, so again, let's see how that went. The telescope itself doesn't take too much room, problem is we will have to put it on something outside. Here I am just outside of the city before sunset tonight. We will check some of the famous Messier objects, how they look like in this small aperture. So what do I think about this telescope outside of the city for deep space objects? Not bad, not bad at all actually. We were able to see M3, M5, the global clusters showed quite nicely. Open clusters of course are fair game like the Pleiades, the Beehive cluster and of course the Orion Nebula. And what more can you want really? half of the Messier catalog can be easily reached with this nice telescope. It's not a match for the 12 uh, behind me, but hey, this one is much lighter and much cheaper. Let's go back inside. By now you should be getting an idea of what you can actually observe through this telescope and whether this is something that might be of interest to you. If yes, now let's get into some of the technical details which you will need to compare it to some of the bigger options out there. First it comes with a 130 millimeter primary mirror which is of a parabolic design. Remember parabolic good, spherical bad. If you do happen to buy a spherical design eh, at least you can watch yourself and admire your own brilliance, right? Using the telescope is real simple. All you have to do is extend the flex tube design Then you point it where you need to point it. You put an eyepiece into the focuser and that's it. You look through it and you observe. It's really that, that simple. The focuser. The focuser is of a helical design. It's really not the best focuser out there, but for visual use, for this uh, nice little telescope, it's more than enough. You're not going to be able to do precise, high-powered photos of the planets with this kind of focuser, but hey, 99% of the time it's more than enough to simply focus anything that you need to focus on. Of course for observation you will also need to remove the front cover, that goes without saying. With the telescope you get these two nice little eyepieces, nothing too special, nothing to write home about, it's a 25mm plosal, more than enough to find stuff, to see these wide fields of this telescope that it has to offer and a 10 millimeter which uh, you can use to zoom in and uh, observe some of these objects like the planets with a, bigger, with a better detail. But to be honest, these are enough for the first few nights, but you will need to invest some more money into some more equipment for this nice little telescope. If it costs something like a $250, I think you should invest another 100 to 150 for some equipment in order to fully utilize it. Now finding stuff in the sky simply works with something called a red dot finder. It's a really simple red dot, literally, which you turn on and you point at the right point of the sky that you're interested in. In order to find the objects, you can watch some of my older videos where I describe some techniques on how to manually find these objects. Using an application such as Stellarium is highly recommended in order to help you find these objects. So turning the Dubsonian in the right direction is really easy. You literally just turn it around, same as pointing. It's what you call an Alt-AZ mount, typical Dubsonian mount, nothing to write home about. Very easy, very simple. My big 12 inch uses the same uh, technology, so highly recommended. Now this telescope's main advantage is also its biggest disadvantage, as you can see it's quite short, it needs to stand on some kind of a table in order to use it. This may not 
come as a big deal when you're at home, surrounded by tables, <laughs> but out in the field it can be a bit problematic taking some kind of a chair, some kind of a table with you. But if you have a stable terrace, some kind of a porch where you can store it and observe from, uh, from it, then it becomes really, really, really nice. If you are thinking to buy it, I do have a couple of recommendations. Uh, if you're in the USA, High Point Scientific has a really nice offering. Amazon.com is always uh, an option. And in Europe, there are many local uh, sellers that uh, sell this telescope. Of course, even better if you can find it secondhand. These telescopes get to result quite often because obviously when you begin with this telescope and you observe for half a year, for a year, after that you want to upgrade, then obviously you will want to sell it. This one, I bought it for $100 on the second-hand market, so I was quite happy with this purchase. And I'm going to sell it in a few weeks as well, because the main reason I bought it is to make this video. Just for you guys. Now, I mentioned that these eyepieces are not enough. Now, let's cover some of the equipment that you should, in my opinion, buy in order to make the most of this telescope. First thing, you should make some kind of solar filter. This one was made by the guy who sold it. It's really easy. All you have to do is buy some bother filter sheets. They are very cheap. I can put the link in the description. And after that, just uh, put it in some kind of a paper. This one goes at the front, as you saw from my observation outside. And that's it. Really easy. And it is going to keep you busy over the day observing the sun for a very long time. What you should buy next is collimation equipment either you can buy a simple cheshire tool again you can find the link in my master recommendation document which you can find the link below it's a really easy tool which will help you collimate the telescope if you are new to dobsonians they are made of two mirrors one primary one secondary and these need to be aligned nicely to each other it's really not too difficult once you understand a little bit how it works. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be okay in order to provide good views. Another option a little bit more expensive is a laser collimator, but keep in mind the laser collimator itself needs to be collimated, so it's a little bit trickier. Now the greatest thing about collimating tools and other equipment is that you can simply reuse it with a bigger telescope. What I can also recommend is the 3 adapter. It's a cell phone adapter which uh, you can use in order to take nice little pictures of the moon, maybe even the planets, if you have a really nice uh, cell phone. Simply, you mount it to the eyepiece, you put your cell phone here. I have a whole video made on this one. So again, highly recommended that you get one. And if you upgrade your telescope later, again, you get to keep your cell phone adapter. Now, in terms of eyepieces, I really want to be mindful. I don't want to recommend to you eyepieces for hundreds of dollars because let's keep it real. If you already invested a little bit of uh, money into a budget telescope, you don't want to spend too much time for eyepieces. What I can recommend to you is a really nice zoom eyepiece, SV Boni SV191. You can check my videos on the zooms. If it's too much for you, you can still buy its uh, cheaper little brother, SV Boni SV135. It's just as good, just a little bit uh, tighter. Again, the best thing about this one is it can stay with you possibly forever for any kind of telescope you have in the future. I still use this one in my 12 inch. It's going to cover all the magnifications that you need to cover, especially kids. They have a lot of fun zooming in and out, especially on the moon. It makes for a very, very nice uh, effect. It feels like you are flying towards that uh, object. Really, really big fun. <laughs> and that's all, really. That's all there is to it, to starting with astronomy, to seeing most of the messier uh, objects, observing the planets, uh, the moon, the sun. All you need is this equipment that you see in front of me. Not too much of an investment. Telescope itself, if you can find it second-hand market, uh, $100, $120. Some of this equipment in total for like $100. And you're good to go. Good to go, really. Now, if you're an adult, you have a little bit more money and you're sure that you want to start taking astronomy right from the start a little bit more seriously, my top recommendation still remains the 8-inch Dobsonian. Again, links below. 
not quite from Skywatcher. I do recommend the GSO Apertura these days because it has much better accessories. So feel free to go down that route. Of course, it's going to cost a bit more money, something like 800, 900, maybe 1000 to fully equip it. But at the end of the day, don't expect that the objects will be too much different. Yeah, it's still the same objects, just in a bigger telescope, like an 8 inch or 12 inch, they are going to show more detail, higher brightness, higher clarity. But it's still the same objects. Yeah, buying all of this budget stuff, uh, very easy, very simple, still gets you in the game. You become a real astronomy. This is a real telescope, it's going to get the respect of anybody you see. You're not missing out on anything else, you're not buying a trash scope. It's really highly recommended in most astronomy circles. One more thing I can recommend is a set of really, really nice books. The first one is Nightwatch. It's going to show you a lot of the details, a lot of the basics of uh, astronomy. This doesn't belong there. My daughter made this one for my birthday. <laughs> and a book that I bought lately, maybe even more important for this nice telescope, which is excellent for the moon, the Moon Atlas by Mr. Robert Reeves. It's absolutely amazing. It makes the moon observation so much fun when you know what you're looking at. It has literally thousands of features that you can observe even with this nice little telescope. One more thing which I almost forgot, you should also buy a simple inclinometer which you simply put on the telescope and it shows you at which altitude these the objects that you want to observe. It really, really helps a lot with locating some of these objects and I use it all the time on my 12 inch as well. That's all there is to it. I hope to see you again on this channel. Feel free, like, subscribe and make sure to check my other videos because they have a lot of tips, a lot of equipment which may come in use if you are here seeing this channel for the first time and you do decide to buy this one. 90% of this channel applies to this telescope as well because it's always a Dobsonian, just a little bit smaller. And if you do decide to upgrade, of course, then the 8 inch is my golden recommendation for anybody who is considering entering astronomy in a more serious way. And the 12 inch, I recommend that one only if you already have a telescope and you know what you're doing. It's huge and it uh, really requires more of a commitment in order to observe with it. In my next video, I'm actually reviewing the 12 inch Dobsonian, so you will be able to have a look at that one, have a look at the 8 inch, and make some comparisons. And down the road, I actually want to compare the three of them the 5 inch, the 8 inch, and the 12 inch as to what you can actually see and if it's worth going bigger or simply staying smaller. <laughs> have a great night, clear skies to you, and see you next time.